Morning, morning, morning. Assalamu alaikum, habarigani, all that type of good stuff. Morning. Peace, peace, all that kind of thing. Now, when I say peace, I mean it. I don't mean you any harm. I don't want to cause you any problems. And if I could help you, I would help you. There are those who say peace and happiness, all that kind of good stuff. And they have the resources to help you, but they're not going to do a damn thing <laughs> for you. It's just something to say. How you doing, brother? Well, man, uh, I ain't doing so good, uh. My wife left me, the dog left me, and um, my children really don't like me. I'm, I'm an alcoholic. Uh, th that's nice. Have a nice day, brother. So what's the sense of asking a person, what's happening, what's up with you? Peace, and you really don't mean it. But this is the world that we live in. Surrounded in an environment of folks that's not real. They want to put on a show. You know that they are putting on a show because if people was real, we would be in a much better position than what we are right now. People are selfish. In this society, everybody trying to be a celebrity. Everybody trying to get that attention. It's all about me. I'm, everybody want to be Jesus. Everybody want to be the Christ. Everybody want to be God. Well, not everybody. Because I don't want to be God. I don't want to be a celebrity. I'm not looking for fame and fortune. I just want something that is very simple. Can I live in peace? Leave me the hell alone. 
Will you not discriminate against me? Can I have a little something, you greedy ass? Woo! Make you want to cuss. <laughs> if you don't know me by now. Welcome to another edition of what we call the Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the mighty one, Angel Snub Nub 7. Just want to talk to us just a little taste this morning. I really enjoyed our talk last night. Our talk about the new year. What's the sense of having a new year? What's the sense of celebrating a new year? And you're going to do the same thing. You're not going to do any better than you did last year. You're not going to do anything new. So I thought to begin the new year, that would be, and that is an appropriate topic. What we want to talk about this morning, what we want to talk about this morning is based upon a news story I saw this morning. I want to lay the foundation real quick. And I hope I got this right. I should have looked it up. But I don't mind being corrected. I should have looked it up. But there's something called a symbiotic relationship. I hope I, I'm, I got this correct. What is a symbiotic relationship? A symbiotic relationship is when two life forms that might not even be related, usually not related, they form a union, they form a bond that their union is beneficial to them both. As an example, there are some ants and there are aphids. Most times, the ant might find, because the aphid is easy to prey upon, they're defenseless. Most times, an ant will see an aphid and that would be a good meal for ants. But what happens is, the ant has discovered that this aphid produces some type of sweet dew that is nutritional and good for the ant. So instead of eating the aphids, they sort of like farm the aphids so they can get this dew and they protect the aphids from predators. So it's a win-win situation because the sweet dew, look, the sweet dew that the aphid is producing really is their feces. But it's good for the ants. It's, it's, it's something that's good for the ants. So I would give you my doo-doo, my sweet doo-doo, basically, and the ants will provide protection because there's many other insects they don't care about the sweet dew they love to eat aphids but the aphids because they give the ants their sweet honeydew <laughs> do, <laughs> they there is a there is a win-win situation I give you my doo doo and you provide me protection. It's a win-win situation. There are large fish surrounded by these small fish. And these large fish could easily yum yum eat them up. Yum yum eat them up. Easily eat these smaller fish. But what you will see is that these large fish will stop and relax and open their mouth 
and these small fish will actually go inside the big fish on purpose. The small fish are nature's natural, I guess you would call them natural dentists. They go inside the mouth of the large fish and pick out all kinds of scraps of, of food and other garbage that would be bad for the large fish. They clean the large fish, the dead skin, dead scales from the large fish. So instead of making a meal out of these small fish, the large fish takes advantage of the service provided by these small fish which keeps the large fish healthy which feeds the small fish one hand washes the other one hand washes the other a symbiotic relationship because the large fish could easily eat the small fish because the ants could easily eat the aphids. But there is a compromise. There is a benefit on both sides. One hand washes the other. When we listen to all this blackity black pan African combating, all this blackity black rhetoric. You will never hear them speak about or even suggest a symbiotic relationship. Because it's not about love, it's about one hand washes the other. What is in the best interest of the two life forms? You will never hear Nobody in the blackity black community will talk about a symbiotic relationship. But at the same time, you are too weak to unite among yourself. And even if you did, you're still not in a position to do something worthwhile for yourself. A symbiotic relationship you will find in mammals, you will even find in plants. One hand washes the other for the survival of them both. So I was just thinking, I heard a news broadcast. And these persons or it was said between the ages of 18 and 35 basically white Americans but overall Americans between the ages of 18 and 35 being born uh, in, the, in the late 80s or uh, early 90s I assume and uh, or later they are dissatisfied with their country they're not loyal to their country they're not they're dissatisfied so I'm looking at dissatisfaction. And the black the black and the black community they huff and they puff like they have power but you don't. So when you are in a situation like we are whatever advantages that we can find that will help us we should do that. But you you don't because they're not creative. You don't have 
the power to muscle yourself through the wall. But you talk like you do. So here we are, there's a demographic in this country between the ages of 18 to 35 who are not like their parents because their parents are patriotic. Their parents are, let's make America great again. Let's go back to the past. But you have a group of people in this nation between 18 and 35 who are not like those Americans of the past. But if you listen to these blackity black, black power pan-African type folks, they keep you living in a past that really no longer exists. The white man is the devil, the white man done this, and, and they come up with all these conspiracy theories and blah, blah, blah. There's a demographic between the ages of 18 and 35 that's not like them. Who really are the catalyst of a change in this nation, in this country. Race must be taught. When I was growing up before I was introduced to race, my only friends was Caucasian people, Caucasian children. Nobody called me the N-word. The first one that called me the N-word was black folks. I've never been called a Sambo or the N-word. I take that back. Later on, I did. But among my friends, when I, in my early days, but I will tell you who called me more was black folks. I've never been, I, now I've never, I've been called the N-word by a few Caucasian folks, but I've been called the N-word more by my own. I've been made mockery of my skin color by black folks. They say they love black. Black power family, I'm black and I'm proud. Then they turn around and make fun of your skin color. They do it here all the time. You black son of a... Well, then they try to justify. I thought you loved black. Out of all, since you don't like me, why do you focus on my skin color? Yeah, black. Because you don't really love black. You using black in a negative, but I thought that black power, you you love black. I thought it's supposed to be positive now. But it goes to show you they really don't love. And when you see them reproduce their children, they're reproducing lighter skinned folks. They're not reproducing dark skinned people because that's a that's a lie that's a facade when you look at an organization like the nation of Islam a bunch of light skinned folks leading the dark leading the black so as you really are in the same situation you went from white folks Oppressing and leading you Now a bunch of light skinned Negroes And that's what they done in slavery They In slavery They gave the power of the book To the light skinned To teach the dark To teach the rest Because the light skinned Or the light image Represent them And you claim that you Know this and you do the same thing. You put light skin, you put that white image in front of us to follow. There's no difference. And you call the light skin black, but your subconscious, your mind is telling you different. It's the same thing. You don't see them. And that's probably 
one of the reasons, one of the reasons, you don't like me because I'm too damn black for you. And black represents something bad. Black represents somebody being a fool. Black represents darkness. You talk about, you talk all this crap, how you love the black, but you really don't. They're no different than the Europeans. You're nothing but, these folks are nothing but white people, chocolate colored races. The same thing. If you take the black out of their talk and put white, you can't tell the difference between them and the Nazis or the skinheads or any of these other folks or Joe Biden. They all the same. <laughs> And they don't just like them. They don't want you out of your situation. And they have proven that. That's not me. They have proven that. They don't want us out of the situation. The last 50, 60 years. They have proven. They have proven. this so it's not up to me I'm not judging nobody your actions speak louder than words since 2005 on YouTube have done nothing to uplift you except talk keep you in the church they, re they replace Jesus with their idols that have no power, no more power than Jesus Christ. And they put before us these light skin, these images of light skin folks, the same thing. You went from one slave plantation to another, you're doing the same thing. With a, with a facade that you're doing something different. So we stay in this condition. So I'm talking about a symbiotic relationship. Has nothing to do with love. Has nothing to do with hate. It's about what is in the best interest of the two. One hand washes another. It's done all the time among nations. Don't necessarily like this person, but we work together. One hand washes the other. Your leadership is not that bright because they're not creative. They're not thinking. They just want to put on a show. They just want to put on a show like they're, they're doing something, but in reality, they're not doing a damn thing. And you fall for the show. It's showtime at the Apollo. And you eat it up. So I'm looking at this dissatisfaction in this country, this demographic in this country between the ages of 18 and 35. I'm looking at the vision that we call Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign. If you were smart, if you was brave enough, if you was intelligent enough, like you claim, like you claim that you're God, you could take advantage and build a symbiotic relationship with this demographic. One hand washes the other where they will say or where they will see if we help them accomplish this goal there's a benefit to us. Whenever we're in a situation whenever you are in a situation you have to take advantage of all the tools available to you. You do not hear this in the blackity black 
community, the Pan African comedic, whatever you want to call yourself, uh, more whatever. You don't hear this. That's why they're not successful. And the reality is, they're the spawn. They're the offspring of your oppressor. All these things did not exist until white racism, white supremacy. There was no nation of Islam before white supremacy. There was no Pan-Africanism before white supremacy. There was no Moore Science Temple before white supremacy. There was no comedic science before white supremacy. All these things were spawned. All these things came into being as a result of white supremacy. And they vied off White supremacy. That's why, it's, that's why it's all about the black. And the blackity black, the blackity black. And for the oppressor, it's all about the whitey white, 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 white. Because they're both the same. They're both the same. And nobody wants this to come to an end. Because if it comes to an end, what they going to do? It must continue, it must, it must be able to go forward in order for them to exist. If we solve this problem, what, what do they have to do? Don't need them no more. So they got to keep us in this condition in order for them to exist. Racism must stay. And our situation has turned into a church. All types of pastors and preachers. Liberation is not a church. You don't have to believe I want to be free. They got you, you got to believe this and you got to believe that. Liberation is not about belief. I'm in jail. I simply want to get free. Has nothing to do with belief. You don't have to believe in nothing. Except yourself and your own ability. The reason why I speak to you. The reason why I can talk to you. Is because I had to use my brain power. In a real situation. All that blackity black. Pan-African talk don't help you nothing when you in jail. Don't help you at all in prison. All your intelligence, your scholarship. The only scholarship that prison respect is your ability to understand the law. Real knowledge. And life only respects And you have advantage when you develop real knowledge with real skills. How to fix a car. Plumbing. Electricity. How to build a house. How to grow food. Understanding the healing properties of plants and food. Real knowledge. All this other stuff. It don't help you in the grand scheme of things. Just feel good crap. And I don't need that. I don't need feeling good. I don't want to go to church no more. Revolution is not, not about a church. And then one of the examples, I'm going to get out of here. One of the examples that spirituality is supposed to help you is the Haitian revolution and they believed in God and the spirits and God and the spirits if they, okay so did they pick up guns, did they pick up knives did they pick up weapons if the spirits helped the Haitians 
in the Haitian Revolution, you shouldn't have to pick up a knife and a gun and a stick and a stone. You shouldn't have to do nothing. Why are you picking up physical item if the spirit is helping you? You picking up physical things to fight with. It's all about your strategy. It's not about your spirit. It's about your attitude. It's not about no spooky spirit done a damn thing for you. What are these spirits and these spooks doing for Haiti right now? Where was these spirits and these spooks when these earthquakes hit Haiti? Two times in a row. Has Haiti recovered from those earthquakes? Where are the spirits? Where is the spooks? If they can help you fight your oppressor and get you free, uh, clearly they can help you against a hurricane. And then your spirit and your spook led you to, to, to uh, sign a treaty. I believe what it, what it is with France or whoever it is. I don't keep it with this stuff. But if France or Britain, I think it's France. You signed a treaty where you got to pay these people reparation. You can't even take care of yourself. And the person or the people that oppress you, the oppressor, you got to pay the oppressor reparations. What kind of what kind of spirit? I hope I want to keep those spirits and those demons and those ancestors, spirit, whatever the hell they are. I want to keep them the hell away from me. There's no way to hell. There's no way to hell. I'm gonna pay somebody that whoop my ass. I'm not doing that. I was locked up in the state of Missouri. And then when I got free, I worked and I was a resident of the state of Missouri. So I should pay taxes to the state of Missouri. And so they're going to send me a tax bill. You owe us for taxes. I sent it right back to them and I wrote them a note. Y'all evil ass unjustly locked me up in your institution. I'm not paying you a damn thing. For me to pay them taxes is like me paying them to lock me up. I'm not doing that. You can do it. I'm not doing it. Haiti can do that. I'm not paying no oppressor. So they're going to send me, you, they're going to make their threats, send notices, certify me. I don't give a damn what you do. I'm not giving you nothing. I would rather go back to jail. I'm not paying you a dime. I'm not going to pay for somebody to lock me, that locked me up. So you want to brag about the Haitian Revolution? Look at their condition. What did you gain? What do, what do you benefit? And the people of Haiti are suffering because they don't have they don't have proper leadership. The reason why the black man and woman in America, so brothers and sisters in this country, the reason why you are suffering is because you don't have proper leadership. And the sad thing is you don't want it. You are perfectly happy doing what you do because you're comfortable. And Haiti was comfortable for a little while until their leader, I believe, was assassinated and then they had back-to-back -back earthquakes. Proper leadership still supposed to be there to help guide you and help you put you in a better position because you could take advantage of a symbiotic relationship. When you are a survivalist and then you go out into the forest, 
You have to take advantage of what nature provides. If you don't have, since you don't have food and water, you got to do for yourself out there in the forest. You have to take advantage of what nature provides so that you can survive. Here we are in this country and you're not taking advantage of, of everything, all the resources that can help you in your situation. The only thing you want to do every Sunday, every only thing you want to do is watch YouTube videos all day. You, and that's fine. YouTube videos Debates and conferences and DVDs and tapes and a bunch of books that don't do nothing for you. That has not produced nothing for you. If you was out in a forest, you'd be dead from starvation, from dehydration. You don't know how to survive. The only, woo, the only reason why you're alive because these people allow you to exist. But I'm telling you, and I'm not a prophet, and I'm not trying to scare nobody, but you are in a position because you depend on these people. If they decide to get rid of you once and for all, you're done. Because you're not even in a position to defend yourself. You're defenseless. They can't, they won't. They can and they will. The right situation, the right something that happened in the world, you will see the real. You will, you will get what's coming to you. You will get what's coming to you. There's no strategy. There's no vision. There's no creativity. Morning, I see we have we have Black Superman, a fictional character, a fictional character in our chat room. I was about to turn you off when you said sit around watching YouTube. You can turn me off. I don't ask nobody to be here. You can't accept reality. Why do these people believe because they don't like what they hear? Oh, I'm going to turn your... Go away! I didn't ask you to be here. You an adult and you're, you're all in your feelings because you're guilty. You're watching YouTube. You're reading all these damn books. You believe in all these gods and spirits. And look at your condition. Turn me off. Live your fantasy. Go back to Krypton ass life. Lois Lane and Clark Kent. Go away. I didn't ask for you to come here. Keep living your mythology, your fantasy world. You an adult. So called adult. Dumbass children. A lot of y'all don't even know who the fathers and the mothers are. Nobody don't give a damn. Piss off. Go back to the hell that you came from. I'm about keeping it real. You're not real. You are damn racist. A black wannabe racist. You no different than Adolf Hitler. If you had the power, you do the same thing Hitler done. Even to your own people. Because you, you love them. You love us. You don't love nobody. And you're not intelligent. You're not no damn scholar. You're not no damn... That's what you want to hear. Somebody coddle you and play with you. When you earn it, I will give you the credit. I'm not going to give you no credit and you did not earn it. 
That's what you want. You want somebody to kiss your little knee. You fail and kiss your little knee. You want somebody to tell you sweet thing. I'm not church. I'm not black and black. We keep it real here. That's why you can't go nowhere. Because you live in fantasy and fiction. Trying to follow dead people. Marcus Garvey is gone. Malcolm is gone. Dr. King is gone. All these people are gone. Can't follow dead folks. Elijah Muhammad is gone. They're gone. Silly people. Supposed to be adults. You don't act like no adult. You don't act like free men and women. I'm free. You don't act like free, free men and women. Your knowledge and your scholarship has not, that's not me. It's proven. It has not done nothing. So they want to get upset with me because I'm like the man in the mirror. And you don't like what you see. Now you can talk about me. The difference between you and me is that you talk about me. I would say to myself, they might be right. And then I will examine me. And then I might discover, you know, that's a good point. I'm going to work on that. So the next time you see me, I'm stronger. I'm wiser. So whatever it was, I worked on it so I could be better. Thank you. Even though you said it to try to destroy me, even though you said it to try to make mockery, I took it and made it a positive so I could become stronger. Silly ass people. And look at you. You could put me in a room with all of these supposed to be scholars by myself because I've done it in these chat rooms. I go to these chat rooms by myself. I take on the whole chat room. The only thing they can do is block. There's no reason to block me. I'm not saying nothing disrespectful. I'm not saying nothing uh, uncivil. You cannot handle the reality of things. You want somebody to give you praise and give you honor that you did not deserve. I noticed some folks unsubscribe from, from the channel because of our talk last night. I don't care. You will be replaced. All of you will be replaced. The reason why I'm here is because there's people that want me here. Over 100 channels terminated. And the people keep me here. It don't make no difference. You're jealous ass. It don't make no difference whether you like me or not. You don't have to agree. Now there are some people that believe I should be here simply based upon freedom of speech. Why you don't want me to talk? I'm real with mine. I have, I, I have allowed people to come to my platform and speak their truth. You ain't gonna do that with me. I, pr I have promoted other folks. They don't promote me, why is that? Because I'm real with mine. You don't want me to talk. You don't want me to talk because if people listen to me, all this other stuff is over. And it needs to be over. Because it's not getting you nowhere. 
unless you accept the reality of your situation. Some of you really don't understand the reality of your situation. You talking like this 1930, 1940, 1950, 1960, 1990. This is 2024, people. I don't care if you like me or not. Truth is not a popularity contest. In fact, truth hurts. You think that when I discovered and this revelation that came to me, do you think uh, that was a moment of celebration? When I was a Christian, when I was a Muslim, and the majority of my life, I was trying to give my life to Jesus. The majority of my life, I was trying to give myself to Allah. And then I found out, I found out all of it was fake. You think I felt good about it? The difference between me and you is that I'm a real truth seeker. And you're not. You are loyal to lies because those lies make you feel good. I don't care. I'm a truth seeker. Even if it hurts my feelings. I gravitate toward the real. You dedicate your life to lies and fantasy and fiction. We need to stop doing, but you, we, we act this way because we're children. It make me feel good, but it's not the truth. It's a lie. I'm not into lies no more. I'm not into fantasy no more. I don't care about feeling good. I'm about results. If these things was producing results, I shut up. I don't mind shutting up. I don't talk just to hear myself talk. I talk because there's people out there who was like me trying to find an answer. I wish there was somebody like me when I was 18 years old. I wish there was somebody like me when I was seven years old. So you're blessed. You're caught up in all this fantasy stuff. I'm not impressed by none of this. I've been there, done that. Talking to you so that you can be successful. What you call successful is getting a little bit of scrap. You need the attention of the world. You want to put yourself in a position, they're going to respect you like it or not. You want to be in a position where you're going to get reparations whether they like it or not. Because you that intelligent, you that smart. So you don't have to keep talking about let's get reparations and these no put start a process. This is how we're gonna do it, whether they like it or not. Here I am. I fought the state of Missouri for ten years, and I guarantee you they don't want to fight me no more. They're going to respect me and they grew to respect me whether they like it or not. This is what you want to put yourself in. You want to put yourself in a position whether they like it or not, you're going to respect me. Mm. Y'all silly. See, I'm not going to block nobody unless they become disrespectful, but your comments show how silly you are. And that's why many of you won't come on the live stream 
and show your face so the world can see you for the idiot you really are. Wesley Muhammad is not going to come here. Farrakhan is not going to come here. Geno Jen is not going to come here. All these people, Tahaka Bay is not going to come here. Sanat is not going to come here. All of them are welcome to come here. They're not going to do it because they know I'm going to smash them intellectually. Bring all of them at the same time. All of them. I take all of them on at the same time. That's what I was made for. I was made for this. Bring all of them. But the sad thing, when you see them get their ass whooped, you still follow them. You still gonna support them and you see they got their ass whooped. Cause you're not ready. So you stay right here where you at. In hell, cause you're a hell raiser. Stay here where you at. Cause you profane. Cause you're fake. And your children reflect you. They're not revolutionaries either. Cause you're not. So you stay in your position. You stay where you at. Cause this is what you earn. You are an embarrassment to Marcus Garvey. You are an embarrassment to comedic science. You are an embarrassment to Marcus Garvey. You are an embarrassment to Sojourner Truth. You are an embarrassment to Nova Jolie. You are an embarrassment. You cannot even accomplish what they done. With less money and a government clearly upon their shoulders. That show you how pitiful you are. You're not going to come here and expose yourself like that. I don't want you to call nothing. Bring your ass here, sir. Show your face and you come here. Let the world see who the hell you really are. Let people see you go down in flames. Because that's all they've done. Is come here and go down in flame because you don't even really know what you believe in. That's why the Bible calls you a sheep. And that's why you always want to serve. You a servant because you're a slave and you are a sheep. Looking for Masa. Now your Masa is black. You got you found a black Masa. And you're a sheep and you mindless. The only thing you know how to do is regurgitate. Well, you know, John Henry Clark said this, and I read this out of another book, a plagiarist. You have no mind of your own. No mind of your own. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, that the teachings of Noble Jali say, and you have no say, because you have no mind. I was like you before. There was a time all the words that came out of my mouth was Louis Farrakhan words. I trusted Louis Farrakhan to be right. And at that particular time, he had it going on. That's not going to fly no more in 2024. You're living in a new age. The age of reality, the age of critical thinking, the age of logic, reason, common sense, being analytical. So all that old garbage that y'all teaching, it's not going to fly. It's going to be challenged. And it's being exposed. You need to shut up and just keep hiding behind your avatar. Because you come out in the public... Somebody gonna start whooping your ass. That stuff no longer flies. And these children, this new generation, 
They're not wired like that no more. They don't care about that. But they do understand something very simple. They understand oppression. They understand discrimination. They understand injustice. They understand those simple things. They don't give a damn about your... You want to lick the booty of some dead people. Marcus Garvey and all these other people that y'all foam at the mouth over. They don't care about that stuff. And you actually make those people look bad because they wasn't like that. Nobody is looking for fame and fortune. You dealing with people looking for money, fame and fortune, and to get in your panties. Our ancestors in the past were struggling. They was dealing with the real. And they dealt with it to the best of their ability. And we should learn from their success. We should also learn from their failure. You don't want to deal with their failure. Malcolm X was not perfect. Elijah Muhammad was not perfect. Marcus Garvey, Frederick Douglass, Harry, nobody was perfect. So we learn from their success. We also need to learn from their failure. You don't concentrate on their failure because you have painted dead people like the new Jesus Christ. You might not believe in Jesus, but your new Jesus are the ancestors. Father divine. Class 13. Who, whoever, whatever your new Jesus is. There is no Jesus here. There is no Christ here. There is no Savior here. It's all about you and what you want to do. So if you want to stay a slave. You want to stay in your condition. Stop pretending that you want more. And folks will respect you more because clearly actions speak louder than words. Clearly you don't want to do better. And there's nothing wrong with that. But don't complain. Don't complain about it. Stop pretending to be something that you're not. I advise us that we gravitate and embrace what we call the Mississippi campaign. Creativity, vision, purpose. The best strategy. There's nothing else that's going to change the condition. Nothing. Learn how to be a, a real survivor. And take advantage of the resources that the jungle give you. And above all, grow up and stop being silly. I'm Angel Snub Nub 7. And as our ancestor, Don Cornelius, always said in pardon, I wish us love, peace, and soul. Peace to Twin Pyramid and the Deacons of Reality. We are already 5,000.